I think the best paint just got better. Welcome back to the paint people, everyone. We talk about painting and decorating over here, but I think it's also important to provide information on products because there are a lot out there and some just deserve more attention. About a year ago, we put out a video on Benjamin Moore Aura as part of our product spotlight series. Essentially, I talked about some of the pros and the cons. And to be fair, I found it pretty challenging to find very clear negatives for me. Now we're here a year later. And I'm excited to say that the paint that I love so much has gone through a bit of an evolution, a new version of Aura. What's great is they also adjusted the label so you can clearly differentiate between one and the other. And look, I get it. Aura is definitely a premium product that does have an excellent reputation, generally speaking. So you could say that people might have higher expectations for it. Everyone is going to have their own unique perspective, but in my eyes, all four of them, I'm a major Aura advocate. I've used it in every area of my home consistently, and this is due to Aura's color depth, its color retention, and its smooth finish. But that being said, some of my painter brethren do have their qualms with it, and honestly, I think those questions have pretty much been solved with the new formulation. Whether you're one of those contractors or you're just someone that wants to know how new Aura differs from the original product, I'm here to talk about how the best got better. So one thing that I've heard is I only like using Aura for deep, dark colors or essentially anything that has a ton of colorant in it. This one gets to me a little bit because I've seen firsthand the massive benefit of even going with a lighter color like what I have on my walls right now, Plaster of Paris, using Aura. The coverage on this stuff is so good that you could get away with one coat of paint, assuming there's no major repairs or plastering that needs to be done beforehand. Aura also has much improved hide, which is crucial if you're trying to cover up those difficult, dark, or even bright colors. And I even recently used new Aura with a mid-tone color, and I looked extremely closely at my first coat, and it really truly looked like complete coverage. Now, I'm always someone who encourages at least a second coat regardless, just to be completely sure that everything has been fully covered and there's no risk of flashing especially. But I must say, the new stuff has the best coverage I've seen in a paint thus far. So really, whether your project entails light, medium, or dark colors, I feel like Aura is gonna give you an awesome experience no matter what. The next one, is a biggie. A lot of painters I talk to say that Aura paint is too expensive. I can't deny it is the highest priced interior paint product by Benjamin Moore, at least in its main primary lines. So that could be enough to turn some people off, but not me. If you ask my fiance, I mean, she's not here right now, but <laughs> she'll tell you that I'm all about value. I'm not as concerned with the cost of something if it provides me with tons of value. And I can't begin to describe how happy I've been with my aura walls. Firstly, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, um, but a lot of this unit, especially on the upper half, may or may not be one coat, <laughs> but uh, you would never be able to tell. And not only that, we've been doing quite a bit of wiping and even scrubbing on these walls, especially near the coffee machine, which can have a mind of its own sometimes. Both the color and the finish, the sheen itself has been completely consistent, even after I took a yellow sponge to the wall many, many times. There's a ton of value in a product that has coverage this good combined with color lock technology to preserve the color and prevent it from rubbing off during one of my epic cleaning sessions. I'm always a believer in investing in yourself and in your paint as well, because if you spend a bit more upfront, you'll have a surface that will last way longer and you also will have a better time, in my opinion, using it in the first place. There were some people, however, that did not have as good of a time using it as I did. One thing that I can attest to is Aura's very fast drying time. I love a fast drying paint because it means I can quickly finish a room and recoat it before lunchtime, especially if I had a lot of caffeine that morning. If you're very comfortable painting at a quick pace, the previous iteration of Aura would have suited you just fine. But some of the issues arose when the painter using it wanted to take their time a bit more, especially with a brush while doing trim and baseboards. This is one of the massive upgrades that I have noticed 
with a new version of Aura, which is pretty remarkable. The open time on it, especially in those shinier finishes in satin and semi-gloss, it really seems to have been extended slightly to accommodate more time to work with the product. It really is quite an achievement because I feel like they did this crazy balancing act. There's always a fine line with latex paint and drying time, where you still want it to be pretty quick, but you also need that little buffer so you can eliminate the chance of lap marks showing up. Based on the handful of times that I've used it, I think they really nailed it. And honestly, if you felt it dried way too fast before, get the new stuff in your hands and give it a shot because I feel like the change they made to that drying time is just chef's kiss. Another point that my colleagues brought up is that they felt the need to adjust their technique whenever they would use Aura. I do understand this point because in a lot of circles, Aura was being promoted as more of a specialty product, mainly because it offered such unique characteristics like the color lock technology, the moisture resistance, and the excellent washability across the board, no matter what finish you're going with. It's special in that it does a lot of really unique things. But I think now more than ever, you really don't need to adjust your methods or your workflow or even your tools with a new Aura. You have that extended open time now to improve the overall user experience, no matter what kind of painter you are. And you can just treat it like any other paint that you would be using. You grab a good brush, doesn't really matter what make it is as long as it's good. And a shed resistant woven roller is key. I say shed resistant because no roller is truly shed proof. Am I right, people? So annoying. <laughs> And while there are some that say that Aura just feels so different that they gotta change up their whole workflow, there's the other camp that think it's just like any other paint. <laughs> and I can't stress enough the clear unique benefits of a product like this. And I'm a bit of a nerd, not just because I'm wearing glasses, okay? I'm actually really into the whole engineering side of paint and all the technical aspects of it. And new Aura has improved on the already exclusive technologies found in the original. There's an improved proprietary resin. You also have the Gen X technology, and then of course, color lock technology, which ensures that this plaster of Paris room is going to look the same years and years to come. Okay, I gotta tell you this story. So first of all, I am not one to ever encourage touch-ups on a wall with a brush. Any longer than a month, maybe even a week, you might as well paint the entire wall corner to corner, otherwise you'll see little spots here and there. Matter of fact, let me bring you over to the fridge. Not because I need a snack or anything, <laughs> I just wanna show you something. Welcome to my fridge, but more importantly, this wall right here. So for whatever reason, I decided to store one of my little step ladders over here in this convenient little crevice in between this wall and the fridge. I just did it because it was the perfect size for it. But the more I pulled it in and out, the more I realized that I was really beating up this wall over here. And after a teensy bit of little repair work, I took my Plaster of Paris Aura mat and I just touched up the wall. I was like, you know what? Might as well give it a go. I would have painted the whole wall panel corner to corner, but I also didn't wanna continue up 14 feet. These are pretty high ceilings. So I just did this one spot right over here. And to my surprise, it completely blended in to the existing wall paint. Honestly, I gotta credit Aura, cause not only did it retain its color, but I was also able to keep this whole wall nice and clean so that when I did touch it up, the wall surrounding my little fresh touch up looked just as fresh. So as far as I know, the new version of Aura is available in those four standard interior finishes of matte, eggshell, satin, and semi-gloss. I haven't yet seen a new version of Aura Bath & Spa, which is already an amazing product and I love it in my bathroom, but maybe we might see an upgrade in the near future? I honestly don't know. What I do know is if you're looking for the best paint that I've ever used, it's this stuff. And if you've only tried old Aura, I think it's well worth to give new Aura a shot because it will not only improve your overall workflow, but whoever's house you're painting will definitely thank you a decade from now when their walls still look awesome. Speaking of walls, I talked about the color that I used on these walls around me in this video right over here. I'm so happy with how it turned out. So if you wanna know more about the color and some color pairings for it, click on this video for that.